In 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul talks about the word of knowledge, which is given by the Holy Spirit for the common good. This word of knowledge is often spoken of by charismatics. So a listener in Boise, Idaho asks, what is the word of knowledge? Well, may I give an answer that I think is adequate, and I don't want it to appear facetious, but I think the gift of knowledge that they talk about is a gift that means that they know something that you and I don't know. And my feeling is that some of these that claim to have the gift of knowledge really don't seem to have it at all. I think probably I ought to turn and read 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 22nd verse. Let me begin at verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in man, for all things are yours. In other words, don't glory in one man. Don't become a follower, a worshiper of just one man. It's a dangerous practice because Paul says here, why, whether it's Paul or Apollos or Cephas, and these were the ones people are saying, oh, I follow this man. Well, all of them are yours. Very frankly, today I have made a point of reading on every subject that I consider in the Bible. I'd like to read on all sides of the question. Somebody said to me, you're always sounding to me like a narrow-minded pre-male, pre-trib preacher. Well, I said, I really am. And I said, the reason that I am is I went and graduated from a school that happens to be a mill, and it's post-trib, even if they believe in a tribulation, which most of them don't at all. And I said, because I studied that viewpoint is the reason I can be so sure about the viewpoint I have now. And Paul is saying here, why, don't claim one man. Don't glory in one man that you listen to. For instance, on radio, there are people that do that. We're not celebrities on radio. We're just ought to be humble servants of God. That's all in the world that we can claim. And therefore, all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all of yours. This great big world that I live in today and still don't know too much about it, but it's all mine, and I can explore in any field that I want to today. What a glorious, wonderful privilege that is. That's the thing that made being young so wonderful to me was to be able to explore so many different avenues and fields that I knew very little about. And when I used that verse, I said, well, I do not really know what that verse means because it's so wonderful. And a brother made a special trip to downtown Los Angeles to the office that I had in the church of the open door where I was pastor, and he insisted to come in. I was busy, but he insisted to come in, and I told the secretary to let him in, and he came in. And this is what he said to me. He says, now, Dr. McGee, you said on the radio that there's a verse of Scripture that you felt like you just didn't know. Well, I have a gift of knowledge, and I have come in to tell you what that verse means. Well, I said, the first thing, brother, you didn't even understand what I meant when I said that about that verse. So I'm afraid that you won't be able to help me very much with the verse. So I excused him and I let him go. Somebody says, you may have missed a very wonderful experience. Maybe I did, but I was willing to risk it anyway because I did not feel that that man had a gift of knowledge. And I'm afraid there are a great many people that claim certain gifts today that they really don't have at all. I Personally, I'd be afraid to claim that gift in this day in which we live.